to be able to speak with you this evening, to share the love of Jesus with you. I count it all just the amazing grace of God. Bless the Lord. We are talking about growing in Christ in 2014 and have moving in the gift of prayer, a lifestyle of prayer. So if you're going to grow as a Christian, then we must have a lifestyle in the word where we study our word daily. And then we also need that lifestyle in prayer where we spend time in communication and relationship building with God. You know, prayer is not just to tell God what's wrong. <laughs> Amen. But we started off with prayer begins with praise. It begins with acknowledging who God is and praising and honoring him. I want to thank all of you who took the challenge that we issued, um, which was to, if you pray for 30 minutes, let the first half of your prayer, bless God, um, be praise and worship of the Lord. Igno what we went from Psalms 150. It says <clears throat> that we should, let me make sure I get it right. It says, praise him for his mighty acts and for his magnificent greatness or for his excellent greatness. So when we talk about praise and worship, that's really the definition of what we have. We're pray honoring God, lifting him up verbally, um, whether it's in our head, in our hearts or in our words. Bless the Lord. Um, praising him for his mighty acts, the things that he's done and for his excellent greatness, the wonder of who he is. Bless the Lord. So nothing gets left out. And our, our challenge this week is to, if you pray for 30 minutes, then make sure that you praise for 30 minutes and that you worship for 30 minutes. And be true in it because the thing is, the word of God tells us that we overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. And when we start praising God, let your praise be personal. Let it be personal. Let it be, you know, God, I want to thank you for waking me up this morning. You know, and giving me strength and protecting me as I go over the highways and the byways. And Father God, I just thank you that my car survived the, the winter storm. Lord God, that we didn't slide into a ditch. And, and I thank you that, you know, you've been gracious and favorable unto us to keep us employed. Amen. Through this um, mini recession that we've had going on. Or if we weren't employed, then God, that you continue to provide for us. Bless God. And, and, you know, your grace in this area is tremendous and phenomenal. Lord, I thank you that you're working out this relationship while you're still building this other or, or that, you know, you'll give me the strength to, to separate from this particular relationship because I want to continue to honor you. But before I leave that person, Lord God, let grow this person or grow this business or grow this church, you know, wherever you're leaving, then, then make sure that you pronounce blessing and growth back in that place where um, you were once um, connected to, you know, and then as you grow and as you continue to speak and continue to speak forth the word, the praises of God, it just builds our faith. God, I thank you, Lord, that when I prayed this prayer that you heard me, bless God, and that you provided the answer to my prayer. And so that praise builds our faith but it's also our testimony. So when you think about praise, let, let's make it as personal as possible because God himself is a personal God. Praise the Lord. Now, today we're going to be talking about petition, making our petition or our request made known unto God. And we're going to this beautiful lady in the book of Samuel. 1 Samuel 1, and we're going to start at verse 11. And I just want to kind of preface it so that we don't have to read so much of the, of the scripture during the program, but I encourage you to read 1 Samuel chapter 1. And this is the story of Samuel's mother who was crying out before the Lord, Hannah, um, because she wanted a child. Praise God. And God heard her prayer. And so this is, we're talking about petition. And the beautiful thing about Christianity and us as Christians is that we can go to the Lord and we can make our requests known unto him and he will answer. You know, Jesus himself even said, whatsoever you ask the father in my name, that he will do. 
and bless God. So let's start with um, with First Samuel chapter one and verse eleven. It says, and she made a vow, and this is speaking of Hannah as she prayed before the Lord. She and her husband had gone to the temple. And it says, and she made a vow and said, O Lord of hosts, if thou will indeed look unto my affliction, the affliction of your, of your, maid, of your maidservant, and remember me and forget not your maidservant, but will give your maidservant a male child, then I will give him to the Lord all the days of his life, and no razor shall come upon his head. <coughs> and it happened that as she continued in prayer before the Lord, Eli watched her mouth, who was the priest at the time, and Hannah spoke only in her heart while her words moved and her voice was not heard. And, this, and then, you know, Eli finally says a terrible hand. He, he asked her if she was drinking, what was going on, how come she was talking and he couldn't hear her. Um, but Eli said unto her, verse 17, then Eli answered her, said, go in peace. And the Lord of Israel grant you the petition, which you have asked of him. Ooh. Amen. So may God grant you the petition. May God answer the prayer that you have asked of him. So Hannah, when she went to God, she said, Lord, this is what I want. She was very specific about it. She was very humble. She said, I am your maidservant. I am asking that you will grant unto me, bless the Lord, <laughs> the ability to bring forth a child. And that child, don't forget, me, I want a male child. She's real specific, right? She said, give me a male child, and I will give him back to you. And his life will be a life of consecration. Praise God. So she made her petition known to God. And she, made, she was very clear in her request. And I think so often, sometimes as Christians, we just throw out to God, okay, God, just bless me some kind of way. Any way you bless me, Lord, I'll be satisfied. <laughs> and, you know, God really wants to know. He, the scripture tells us to make our request known, to put that petition out before the Lord. Now, when we talk about, you know, what, what, what are we saying when we say put a petition before the Lord? It really just means to make your request, to, to lay out your request before the Lord. Think about when a person is running for office. What do they say? They put their intent to run on the petition. And then they go to people and they tell them, I am running for office, for this specific office. And I would like for you to support me in my desire to run for this particular office. And the response of the people is either to sign the position, which is to say, I agree. Or it is to say, no, I'm not going to agree to that. So they don't sign it. Now, how that applies here is this. When, ha when Hannah prayed unto the Lord, she made a request before God. The priest, Eli... Even though he didn't hear her prayer in particular, once she told him that she was praying and not just babbling, praise God, then Eli said to her, he says, go in peace. It's like you don't have to cry anymore. Bless the Lord. Amen. The God of Israel grant you the petition which you have asked of him. So bless God. When she went to, when after that, the confirmation of, that her prayer was coming to pass came through the priest of the house of that day. So as believers and as throughout the word of God, we do have, I guess, some benefits that we don't see readily across other religions. And so as we're talking about growing in Christ, I want you to think about this. You know, we have a God where we have a prayer hearing and a prayer answering God. You know, I love people and I love, you know, the, the, the writers, the songwriters who say, I had a praying grandmama. <laughs> Amen. And um, then we say that, you know, we'll say, well, you know, I'm saved now because of the prayers of my grandmother. I'm saved now because of the prayers of my honor. I'm pray saved now because of the prayers of my mother and father. You know, that type thing. Praise be the name of the Lord. 
Amen. God honors the prayers of the righteous because scripture even tells us the prayers of the righteous, those in right relationship and good standing with him avail much. They bring about rapid answers from the Lord God. Amen. Amen. So if you're praying for someone today and you're not seeing the change that you've been requesting God to bring in their lives, just keep praying. It'll come. Keep praying. It will come. Now, you know, the Old Testament, we see Elijah, and this is a perfect example of how in Christianity, we know God hears and answers our prayers. In 1 Kings 18 and 26, Elijah prayed to God, and he said he, had a, he was in a contest, so to speak, or a battle, really a battle for his life um, with, the king, with, the princes of, with the priest of Baal. And he said, let the real God answer by fire. And this is in 1 Kings 18 and 26. And during that prayer in, to God, he said, let the real God answer by fire. And so as he prayed to the Lord, he, he let them go first. He's like, good, call on your God. And they called on their God and they cut themselves and they screamed and all types of things. And they, they asked for their God to hear and answer. And he never did. Never. And Elijah just let that craziness carry on all day until it was time for the oblation, the time that we know the presence of God shows up. And once, you know, they were done and obviously they were not hearing from God, then Elijah said, all right, my turn. <laughs> Amen. And as he made his prayer and petition before the Lord, what happened? The glory of God came down and whoo, burned up the offering licked up the water and destroyed even the prince of the priest of Baal that were standing around. See, God heard Elijah and then he answered his prayer. And so one thing we honor God for is that he hears us and he answers. And we just see two examples of it right there. And think about your own life. Think about how often you've prayed to God for something and he's given it to you. Amen. That's the way God operates. He gives us those things that we ask him for. And when we ask earnestly, earnestly, according to his will. And a part of that is our petition. You know, there was no, how different from these words are those of the psalmist. But certainly God has heard me. Praise God. And he has attended to the voice of my prayer. That's in Psalms chapter 66 and verse 19. You know, the nature of a petition, first of all, is that God has commanded us to pray. When we think about anything, let's take a look at Matthew 7, 7, and 8. <laughs> Amen. Verse, um, verses 7 and 8. It says, Ask and it shall be given unto you. Seek and ye shall find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. For everyone that asks receives. Bless the Lord. And to he that seeketh find it. And to him that knocks it is opened unto him. Then in verse number 9 it says, Wherein, um, Which one of you, if your son ask of him bread, give him a stone. Or if he ask him a fish, Give him a serpent. If ye being, it says, if ye being evil know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your Father in heaven give good things unto them that ask? And this is the teachings of Jesus Christ. He's telling us that if we will just take our prayer requests to the Lord and make them known, the power of petition is the, is the asking, seeking, knocking, Bless the Lord. It's the asking God. God, I need a job. Seeking, going out and applying for one. Knocking, going on those interviews, interview after interview, until he brings you into line with that right position. Bless the Lord. It's the asking. Lord, I need healing. Seeking, going to, um, if, if it requires you to go for prayer or if it qu requires you to go to the doctor, whatever it is, and continually knocking, that means, Lord, do you hear me? Lord, I'm, Lord, I know you hear me, so I'm waiting for your healing. Lord, I'm waiting for the manifestation. God, I'm believing you. I'm standing on your word. And um, it just reminds me kind of, if you think about this character 
that's on television. It's a, um, called the Big Bang Theory. And the character on there, his name is Sheldon. And when Sheldon goes to someone's door, he knocks. And he called, knocks three times. And he says, not, he, like if he's knocking on his neighbor's door, he says, Penny, Penny, Penny. And see, that's what God really wants. He answers our prayers, but the repeat, the need for us to continue to ask, the need for us to continue to seek, the need for us to continue to knock, that's for us. Amen. That is for each one of us. That's a need that we have. Bless God. And it builds our faith and it encourages our heart and it settles our spirit to know I'm seeking the voice of God and my faith and my answer is only in the Lord. And through trusting him, we know, I know that he is going to answer my every single prayer. And the beauty of that is that God does. He answers our prayers. Bless the Lord. We don't, we can, one thing we can do is we can trust that our words and our prayers are not in vain. Bless the Lord. But that he continues to bless us and give us favor and answers our prayers. Because it's not only, it's for us. And it's also for his name's sake. God's not going to leave his word out there and let it come back to him void. He's going to, he's going to accomplish, that word is going to accomplish the very thing that he sent it out to do. Amen. Amen. Bless the Lord. So one thing we can do is we can count on God to fulfill the promises of his word. Bless the Lord. <clears throat> In 1 Timothy um, chapter 2 and 8, we find that God also, you know, Paul reminds Timothy that it's important for him to continue to pray. And I just want to pull up 1 Timothy 2 and 8. And I'm going to encourage you to, that as we go along, that you either write down the scripture Or that you turn with me. And I turn. So that gives everybody time to get there. It says, I will therefore that men pray everywhere, uplifting holy hands without doubting. So Peter, um, Timothy, it, Paul is exhorting Timothy that, first of all, all supplications, prayers, intercession, giving thanks be made for all men. And that's um, 1 Timothy 2 and 1 and then 1 Timothy 2 and eight when we pray our petitions should be made by faith whatsoever we ask god it should be a faith the hebrews chapter 1 to hebrews chapter 11 says that if any man please god that any man let me just go there hebrews 11 and 6 but without faith, it is impossible to please God. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is the rewarder of those that diligently seek him. So that in order for us to honor God and to bless God and to please God and to see, praise God, the manifestation of our answered prayers, we must pray in faith. It says it's impossible to please him. It's why? Because this is the character of God. For he that comes to God must believe that he is God and that he is the rewarder of those who diligently seek him. So we do believe that. And let's turn over to James chapter 1 and verse 6. And in James 1 and 6, it says this. But let him that ask in faith, nothing wavering, for he that wavereth is like the wave of the sea, um, the wave of the sea driven with the wind and tossed. Basically, it says, and that's, that, that comes after verse number five. It says, if any man lack wisdom, let him ask of God, who giveth liberally and upbraideth not, and it shall be given unto him. It says, but if you ask in faith, nothing wavering, um, for if you're wavering, then you're like a man tossed by the sea. Bless God. And you're driven by the wind and tossed. Which means that the cares of this world and the airs of this world will be driving you. But he says, if you, that's if you waver. But if you ask in faith, 
you shall receive it. Bless the Lord. So that's no matter everything that you need from God. If you need faith, ask for faith. If you need wisdom, ask God to build your wisdom. And the answer to many of our prayers is right here in the word of God. Amen. It's right here in the word of God. You know, um, if we take a look here, it says, I'm going to give you seven keys to getting your prayers answered from God. You know, a part of we were discussing just uh, in this moment in the session that it's important that we make our petition, make our request known before the father. Think about the prayer of Jesus when he prayed our father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. We've honored God, thy kingdom come that thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We're still honoring God. Give us this day, our daily bread petition and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Amen. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Praise God. Those are all our petition before the Lord. God, give us our daily bread, our food, our spiritual food, whatever wisdom we need, whatever we need to feed us. Amen. <laughs> um, lead me not into temptation. God, I don't want to get into any tests and trials along any tempted by the enemy. Keep him out of my life. Deliver me from the enemy. Keep him out of my life. Make my pathway straight. You know, give me the, the set me on the right path and deliver us from, you know, deliver us from that evil. So we know that our petitions are made known to the Lord. Jesus said, pray our father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts. Amen. Lead us not into temptation. Deliver us from evil. Bless God. That's, we have praise on the front end, our petition in the middle, and then praise on the back end. What for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. So when we think about prayer, we have our praise and worship and adoration of God. Amen. Our calling out to him to be, to be more in his presence and to be more like him. I would even say, you know, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Could even be a part of our petition before the Lord. Whatever you have need of, God's ear is attended to your need. His ear is attended to your every concern. The Lord cares about everything about us. When we think about putting our petition out before the Lord, these are just a few of the simple rules that we follow um, in, in our prayer. We can assure, we can be rest assured that our prayers are being answered by God. Amen. He said, make our requests known unto the Lord. Praise God. The objects of our prayer for whom or what should we pray? And so, first of all, I would say that um, it's important that we pray for ourselves because the scripture tells us that we should love our neighbors. We love ourselves. So we should start off with one honoring God and that praise and worship. And then we should pray. turn it I have to turn the volume off here sorry we should pray for ourselves because unless we are in God's will you know he can't answer us so we should pray make sure that we're in the will of God and then he hears our petition thus we begin you know with God cleanse me God give me wisdom God make me closer to you God, heal my sickness. God, deliver me from, you know, the, the pains and the struggles of this world. I mean, you know what your petitions are. Sit down, even if you have to think about it. You say, well, God's not answering my prayer. Did you pray that prayer? Was that one of your petitions before the Lord? Amen. Did you? You know, I know a lot of times, I know I've been guilty of this. I thought a thing, but I didn't take time to pray about it. And when I went back to look at it, I realized, wow, I really didn't pray about that. I just thought about it or I talked about it. But I haven't taken the time to really pray and ask God, God, I'm asking you now in the name of Jesus to do this for me. To bring me into this position, to give me favor in this direction, to order my, to, and be real specific. See, Hannah, where we started tonight, was very specific. She said, Father, I'm your maid servant. Give me a male child. Amen. Give me a male child. She said, and that child, I'll give him back to you. I'll honor you with him. But God, I'm asking you to, to be merciful and show me your love 
and do this for me. I don't know how many times she had prayed that in the past or if she ever had, but she was very specific in her request. Amen. How many specific prayers are you praying? And are you seeing the blessings of God come in your direction as a result of those prayers, those answered prayers? See, that all builds our faith. God, we're, we're asking you, Lord God, to bless us with food in our home. Well, th then have, do you have a job? Amen. Or has he connected you with one that will have favor on you to, get, to give you that food or for a season? Bless God, or even for just this one-time event. The thing is, when we pray to God, we, I want you to think about your prayers a little more in detail. Because in the area of petition is where we put that detail. And remember, our prayers start with worshiping God, praising God, acknowledging him and honoring him for who he is. Bless the Lord, giving him our petition, and then thanking him and honoring him as God, knowing that you're the only one that can provide this for me. And God answers our petition. He answers our prayers before him. I want to encourage you tonight that as we pray, pray to the Father. First, pray to the Father. John chapter 16 and 23 tells us, and in that Jesus is teaching his disciples. He said, you'll ask me nothing, but whatever you ask of the Father in my name, that he will give unto you. So pray to the Father and pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus said, verily I say unto you, if you believe on the works that I do, <laughs> bless the Lord, greater works than these shall ye do. If you want to move in the giftings and the um, anointing of the Holy Spirit and the giftings of God, you know, the healing the sick, the raising the dead, the casting out of devils, those gifts, bless God, then we must ask in the name of Jesus. Because he said, whatsoever... He's done great works, but we're going to do greater works. And he said, we're going to do these greater works because he goes to his father. And whatsoever we shall ask in his name, he said, that will I do that my father may be glorified in the son. Are you asking in the name of Jesus when you pray? Because you should. Amen. And be led by the Holy Spirit. You know, the Holy Spirit, if you are filled with the Holy Spirit and you pray in other tongues, then pray in the spirit. The Bible says that when we pray in the spirit, we're not praying to ourselves. Sometimes we don't even have the understanding. Just pray in the spirit because God is listening. Bless God. Let his anointing flow. It says, like in um, Romans chapter 8, um, the spirit helps our infirmities. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the spirit, but the spirit itself maketh intercession for us with 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 groanings which cannot be uttered bless god which may not be understood basically by every man but i encourage you to pray in the spirit pray with full understanding of the rights and privileges that you have as a believer bless god so many of us we do pray in tongues and we pray in the spirit and it says and if you pray in an unknown tongue then you know you're praying in the spirit and your understanding may not be fruitful but then when you pray with the understanding, then you know that your petition or your request has been heard by God. I do both. <laughs> Amen. It's not that I don't believe the spirit is not making intercession for me, but I want to make sure that my mind and my ears and my voice and my inner man and my mind and my heart knows. Oh, yeah, I let God know. about. I brought that to his attention. <laughs> Amen. Indeed, he knows everything pertaining to me, but I just want to honor him by asking literally. <laughs> Bless the Lord. I encourage you to do the same because it, not only that, it builds my faith. It builds your faith. It builds our faith as we ask God, you know, verbally, God, I need this from you. Lord, I want to know something from you. And when we ask him and he gives us that petition from our heart, Bless the Lord. And you know, I prayed to God about this. And this is the answer. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. Bless God. And the evidence of things not seen. Faith is, I asked God for it. I believed him for it. Now I know he's going to provide it. I'm hoping that he will provide it. There's the provision. There's my substance. Bless God. 
Next, we have to pray in harmony with the word of God. Bless the Lord. Whatever we ask, um, let it be from God. Let it be in line with his word. It says, Jesus said in John chapter 15 and 7, it says, if ye abide in me and my words abide in you, you can ask what you will and it shall be done unto you. That's the Lord. These are the words of Jesus and his words will not fail. His words will always come to pass and that we should not doubt. Just like we're saved, just like we're filled with the Holy Ghost, just like you are alive. (laughs) Bless God. Ask and don't waver, don't wonder. Believe, trust the Lord to accomplish the work that you have asked him to do. Even right here in James chapter 1 and verse 6, we said he, the scripture tells us, it says, but let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. Amen. Ask in faith. Bless God. And if your faith is, you know, if your faith is not as strong as you like for it to be, and you know that you need to grow more, be increased more, then I encourage you to ask God, God, strengthen my unbelief. Lord, if I believe, but strengthen my unbelief. Remember the father of the lunatic in the Gospels? He, when, when Jesus came in and, you know, the disciples said, Lord, we tried, you know, we tried to cast the devil out of this one, but we couldn't. Why couldn't we? And Jesus came over and he asked the man, he said, do you believe? And he said, yes. And I love how he padded his situation. He said, yes, but, you know, strengthen my unbelief. If, if, if it's anything in me that's hindering this process, then, Lord, strengthen it. Lord, forgive me. Lord, make it better. Lord, I don't know what to do, but you do. <laughs> Amen. And then we see God, that Jesus Christ was able to heal the lunatic. And the scripture says that these kind cometh out but by fasting and prayer. So we're going to talk a little bit about more in the future about the power of adding fasting to your prayer life and seeing the awesomeness of God. Amen. We've added praise. We've added worship. We have our petition. And we're definitely going to talk about, and we've added confession. Bless God. So we definitely want to talk about adding fasting to see that additional power of God break through. And finally, we want to be sure that we always praise God for the answer. We want to praise God for the answer. Philippians 4 and 6 tells us this. It says, be careful for nothing, but in everything with prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, 